Hey everyone, and welcome to part 20 of the Godot top-down shooter tutorial. My name's Joe, and this is part one of a three-part series where we're gonna implement pathfinding into our game. We're gonna be writing our own A-star implementation, and we're gonna go through all the things you need to do that in Godot. Uh, in this first one, we're just gonna write the algorithm. The next one, we'll actually implement it into our game. And then finally, we'll add collision handling so that our units know how to avoid walls and optionally other players. There's also gonna be a follow-up fourth video on pathfinding where I'm just gonna show you how you can draw what your navigation grid looks like and what paths a unit is currently taking so that you can help debug a little bit better. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's talk about what Godot provides as far as navigation goes. So Godot actually has its own built-in navigation server that you can use and a navigation 2D node that we could use as you see here in the docs. The problem though, unfortunately, is that the built-in Godot navigation does not really handle runtime um, updating very well. Like it's really hard uh, besides just baking it and having the nav mesh exist when your game starts. It's really not optimized for continuing to update and rebake that navigation mesh as your game runs. Additionally, it's really hard to incorporate multiple sources of input. So you can build a nav mesh from a tile map per se, but if you've got other objects that should um, take away or block certain parts of your navigation mesh, it's not built to take those inputs in. So it doesn't really allow for a collision avoidance with objects that are not part of the tile map or whatever you're using to create your nav, nav mesh or navigation polygon in the first place. So because of that, we're not going to use Godot's built-in navigation 2D. Now, that being said, this is going to get improved a lot in Godot 4.0. As you can see here, this PR um, that was done, I think is Google's Summer of Code, uh, is a big improvement to Godot's built-in navigation server, um, and it'll come with a lot of stuff, including obstacles, collision avoidance, etc., and runtime baking and continuous um, updates. And you can see some examples here in this PR if you search it um, of just what that will look like. But for now, we don't have access to it. It's going to be in the 4.0 update, so we're going to have to roll our own. That said, we do not need to implement A star completely from scratch. So I believe under the hood, this navigation 2D node that we looked at actually uses an A star uh, implementation, which you can also access on its own. So we can use Godot's built-in A star class. In this case, we'll be using the A star 2D to kind of build our own navigation and pathfinding handling. And so we don't have to implement A star. So I'm not going to go through and, and talk about how you would implement it on your own or what A star is doing under the hood. That'll be, you know, another video or something you can look up on your own. But we will go over how we can use this A star 2D class to make our own custom pathfinding logic, which is exactly what we're going to do. So just wanted to go over that. That's kind of the gist of what we're going to do and how we're gonna do it. We're gonna use this built-in A star 2D class. Um, and eventually, first in this video, we are just gonna build the algorithm. We're just gonna build our handling around A star 2D and implement it into our game. I'm not sure how many videos pathfinding is gonna be. It might be two, it might be three, um, just cause there's a lot to cover. I'd also like to show you how to build your own like debug rendering so you can see the paths that all your agents are taking and you can see the navigation grid overlaid for debugging purposes. It's really helpful, but that'll be saved for the end. First, we're just going to build our algorithm. Then we're going to work on actually adding obstacles uh, at first, just like walls. So helping our units avoid walls. And then hopefully later on, we'll get to actually helping them avoid other units. So that's the plan. I hope that sounds good and makes sense. Just as a heads up, this is going to be pretty mathy. We're going to have to do a lot of math and um, just a lot of calculations to figure out how, how to build up our A-star grid. And with that being said too, this is not the best implementation. This is not super performant. It's not amazing. It's not production ready. You definitely would need to do some tweaks on it. But for our small game with, you know, 10 things using it in a small tile map, it absolutely works. And it's going to introduce you to everything you need to do some of those optimizations or changes on your own as needed. So anyway, with that enough talk, let's get right into it and start thinking about how we're going to build out our algorithm. So the way we're going to build our algorithm is actually really similar in some ways to the method described in this article on Medium. This is actually an article I read when I first got into Godot over a year ago. 
and I was trying to figure out how to use Godot's built-in pathfinding. So it's gonna be pretty heavily changed for our use case and with some optimizations that I've made over time. But um, if you wanna read this article, as, if you prefer reading and wanna kinda of do things on your own, this is a great um, article to look at and I'll link that in the description to this video. But just as a heads up, credit where it's due to Joseph Frank for making this original tutorial that all, those, all that time ago helped me get started. So before we get into actual coding, let's just think high level how we want to do this. So with an A star algorithm, what you're effectively doing is you're drawing a grid. So you're defining a set of vertices um, and the connections between those vertices. And then what happens is that when you generate a path, you're generating a path from one vertice to another vertice based on which vertices are connected. So if we started um, right here, for example, oh wow, that is not the thing I wanted, but if we started right here, for example, and wanted to come right here, well, we'd have to travel along one of these edges here from this vertice to that vertice. And so what we're trying to do is build up a grid of vertices and then connect them where appropriate. And the way we're going to do that, because we already have a grid, right? We have our tile map. If I switch back over to Godot here, then you'll see that we've already got this grid-based system. We've got our ground. And even though we have walls and ground decorations, we really, like our ground tile map determines where our game world is. And it's already broken up into a grid of squares. So we're going to use this as a basis just to make it a little bit easier. You can absolutely build up an A-star grid without a tile map, but because we already have a grid-based tile map, we're just going to use that to make it a little bit simpler. So before we start coding, let's again just review some of the math and uh, ways that tile maps and grids are stored in Godot so that we have some knowledge of this heading in to building our A-star grid. So I've got a tile map here. Um, this is a three by three tile map. And on the left here, this diagram represents what that tile map is stored internally. And then this diagram on the right represents that same tile map, but uh, where each tile is in the world space. So in this tile map, each tile is 32 by 32 pixels. That's the size down here. And so internally, when we have nine tiles like this, a three by three square, the first tile is going to be stored at 0, 0, and then 1, 0, and then 2, 0. So they're all going to be relative coordinates to the tile set itself. It's just storing the, it's like an indice number. But in the world space, since they're 32 by 32, these same tiles are actually going to occupy, uh, this first one is going to be from x equals 0 to x equals 32, and y equals 0 to y equals 32. So it's going to take up a 32 by 32 square in the world space. Same with this one, instead of being 1, 0 in tile coordinates, it's going to be 32, uh, it's going to start at a x value of 32 and go down to a y value of 32 and keep going. So hopefully that just kind of makes sense. Again, tile sets are stored internally in relative coordinates, and then we're going to actually need to translate them into world coordinates over here. And our A star grid is stored the exact same way it's stored in these relative coordinates here. So it's gonna be really easy to convert from a tile set to our A star grid because they're stored in the same relative coordinates. Um, but we just need to know that anytime we have to figure out which tile we're standing on, we're gonna to have to convert from the like world coordinates that our player or a enemy unit is on and convert those into the tile set or the tile index or tile indices for that specific tile. So hopefully that makes sense. I think we're ready to start jumping in and actually coding now. Okay, so like I said, we already have a grid that covers up basically our whole game world and it's ground. And so what you're gonna wanna make sure you do before we get started is make sure your ground tile set actually has a value in every square in your game, even if it's covered up by something else. So even though I've got decorations here and here and I've got walls here, I need to make sure I still have ground tiles that cover that up because we're going to be building our a star grid based on the tiles that our ground tile map uses so again just make sure that your ground tile map uh, uses all the tiles in your game that there's a value there even if there's some other tile map that has something drawn on top of it all right so we're going to need a new node in our scene tree um really just a new script but we'll create a new node 2d and i'm going to call this pathfinding so we'll do pathfinding and this node is going to be 
responsible for basically creating our A star grid. So I'm gonna attach a script to it. I'll just call that Pathfinding 2 for now. And this script is gonna handle creating and updating our A star grid um, as our game goes on. So there's a couple things we're gonna need here, a few variables. Um, so the first one is we're going to need to say var and we'll say a star and this is going to be um, and we'll do a star 2d dot new so we're going to create a new instance of the a star 2d class and this is going to be again our container for all of our a star operations it's where we're going to store our grid it's where we're going to tell it to update and get paths from etc so we're going to need uh, an a star instance Next, we're gonna need a tile map. And basically, we're gonna use dependency injection to pass in our ground tile map from our main node here. So remember, pathfinding and ground are siblings here. We don't want them directly talking to each other or like knowing they're there. So we can use our main script to pass in our ground tile map through dependency injection. So I'll set this to be a tile map. We'll just keep it as null for right now. And then a couple other things. Um, remember that, oh, whoops, I need to do capital M. Um, remember that all of uh, the things in our game, all of our tiles, all of our players, they're all centered at the top left. Um, actually, that's not true for units, but for our tiles, they're centered at the top left. So if I place a tile here at zero, zero, this, it's going to be indexed at zero, zero here, the top left corner. So whenever we want to get the center of a tile, we're actually going to need to, um, basically add half the width of the tile to its position. And so in order to do that, we're gonna, we're gonna do that calculation one time and we'll just save it. So I'll say half cell size, and this will be a vector two, because it's gonna have an X and a Y. And then we're gonna say var used rect. And what this is gonna be, it's gonna be um, basically the bounds of our ground tile map. So we're gonna store how big our game world is. And we're gonna assume that every cell inside of that rectangle um, is is a, a, a tile in our ground tile map. And so this is gonna be a rect two, and we need it, these types specifically because we're gonna get them from our tile map. So you'll see how we use this in just a second. So now I'm gonna create a function, and this is going to be create navigation map. Okay, and we're gonna pass in as part of this a tile map. Again, this is going to be the function that our main script calls at the beginning of the game to generate our navigation map. So what we're going to do here is first say self.tilemap equals tile map. So we're going to get our tile map and store it there. And now what we need to do is kind of store some of these variables away, get these calculations out of the way so we can use them later. So we'll say half cell size uh, equals tile map. And on any tile map, you can get the cell size just by calling cell size the property, and we'll divide it by two. And so cell size is a vector, so we're just dividing the x and the y coordinates of that vector in half. And so now we can just add this half cell size onto the position of any tile to get the center of that tile. So now that we have that, we can say used rect. And again, this is a function that tile maps provide, so we can say get used rect. And what this is gonna return, uh, I think if I yeah, do that, you'll see it returns a rect two. And it's basically a rectangle that has the extents or the bounds of the entire tile map. So we're gonna use this to, to uh, figure out how wide and how tall our grid is going to need to be. So now that we have that out of the way, we can say var tiles. And these are gonna be the tiles that are gonna actually make up our grid. And in order to get those tiles, we can just say tile map that get used cells. So this is going to return every single cell in the tile map that is filled in. Um, if there are holes in it, it will not return that, but be, that's why we need to make sure that our ground tile map takes up all of those cells within our used rectangle to make sure that all of these tiles are filled in uh, with something there. So again, you don't have to use a tile map to build up the grid. And in fact, you might get better or more accurate results by not doing that. Um, we're just going to use it as a baseline because it's easy to do. If you didn't want to use a tile map, what you could do instead is just generate, you know, a list of of cells of any variety or any width or height. And so you would have, you could potentially have a navigation grid that is not the same cell size as your tile map. Um, but we'll just do the tile map because it's easier in this case. And then we're going to need two more functions that we're going to make right now. 
one is gonna be func um, add uh, traversable. Did I spell that right? Yes, tiles. And so we're gonna say tiles, which will be an array. We'll do a pass here for now, and we'll say func connect traversable tiles. And this will also take in an array. Again, the core idea of these two functions are taken from that um, that tutorial I showed earlier. Uh, we're gonna modify them, but the core idea of how this gets built up um, in that tutorial is still super valid and a good way to do it. So fundamentally what we're gonna do here uh, is we're going to, well, let me just type this in first. So we'll call add traversable tiles, pass in our tiles, and then we'll say connect traversable tiles and pass in our tiles. So fundamentally what we're gonna do here is there's two steps and I'm gonna actually go back to our diagram that we had to explain those. So when we create our navigation grid and we're using our tile map, it's basically gonna go through and add a point, a vertex in our navigation grid at each tile map. So it'll add a vertex right here, oh whoops, a vertex right here and right here and right here. Um, but it's not enough to just add those ver vertices. You have to tell the A star um, implementation, your A star object, how those are actually connected. So we need to manually say, hey, this top left rectangle, this vertice is connected to this one. We need to tell it to connect it via this edge right here. And same for these two and these two. We also need to do it vertically. And we're also gonna do, um, we're gonna do it, uh, oh my gosh, the word diagonally, thank you, <laughs> um, so that we can connect it this way. I am using rectangles, so I can't really draw a diagonal line, but just bear with me. So we're gonna connect this vertice and this vertice. Same with this one and this one up here. We're also gonna do it for this one over here as well. So all of these we're gonna connect uh, to their horizontal and vertical neighbors as well as their diagonal neighbors. And that's gonna give us a grid that has a lot of connections and therefore a lot more ways for our agents that are navigating to reach their destination. So now here back in Godot, now that we've talked and kind of seen that in action, this add function is going to be what we first talked about. It's gonna go through and add all the vertices to our, um, to our grid. And then this connect function is gonna actually then go through all those newly added vertices and connect all the vertices that need to be connected. And we're gonna do these only when we create the map. We never have to do them again. And so that's gonna help this be more efficient because we don't have to continually rebuild our navigation grid. Um, we'll have to do some updates to it, but it'll, the core object will be there and that'll help us cut down on the performance cost of doing navigation like this. So the functions that we're actually gonna use as part of our A star 2D object uh, to connect points and add them, uh, one, we're gonna use this add point function right here. So you just give it a point ID um, and the position and, and it adds it to the grid. Then eventually we're gonna need to go through and connect those points here and then you can use this bi-directional to connect it both ways, which is what we wanna do. Because if you're at one point um, and you go to the other point, uh, to a point it's connected to, you want them to be able to go backwards as well. So all points should be connected bi-directionally, not just one way. There's a bunch of other functions here that are definitely worth checking out and looking at um, on your own time to get more familiar. The, uh, let's see, where is it? Get point path. This is ultimately the function that once we've constructed our grid, we're gonna use for our agents that are trying to navigate to get the path from one point to another. So we're gonna use that. And then we're also going to uh, eventually use set point disabled to disable all of the points that are currently blocked by another unit, by a wall, et cetera. So those are the main functions we're gonna use. We're gonna use a couple others like get ID path, I believe, or get, um, th there's a fair amount of them in here, but just as kind of an idea of what points we're gonna, or what functions here we're gonna use, this is definitely a good class to become familiar with as you're trying to learn how to implement navigation in your game. So one other function that we're gonna to need to write here, now that we are familiar with all that the A star implementation provides, is a function that will give us a unique tile ID. So like I said before, under the hood, even though Godot is storing our uh, navigation grid in a relative, an array of relative indices basically, it also assigns a unique ID to each tile that separates it from all the other, um, or not tile, but vertex, that separates it from all the other vertices in your grid. And you can use this not only to store 
your grid points in your navigation grid, but you can also use it to retrieve those points as well, as long as your method of determin determining that tile ID is deterministic and it'll always produce the same result. So anyway, we're gonna write a function here and we're gonna call it uh, get ID for point. Uh, again, this one is also um, pretty similar to what, I think it is actually, I've, I don't know if I've changed this from what that tutorial um, has it's just a useful way that gives it unique ID so there's nothing that we really need to modify but basically we are going to create a x variable and this is going to be point x minus used rect dot position dot x we're going to do the same thing for the y here and what this is doing is it's creating basically a number really like a hash code you can think of um, based on where this specific point or this vertex is and then it's storing that. So it's always unique, independent of where it is in the grid or even in your game. It could be, you know, uh, like in a negative quadrant, like below or somewhere to the left of zero, zero, or it could be positive. Doesn't matter. It'll still be um, a deterministic number that we can use. So we'll do X plus Y and then multiply that by the used rectangle. So remember, that's the size of our tile map, um, the X. And so this is just a formula that again will produce basically like a hash code that we can use to give each tile a unique ID. And so we're gonna need to do that up here um, when we actually start adding in our tiles, which we'll do right now. So if we come up to our add traversable tiles function, it's actually gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna go through each tile in the tiles array that we pass in. And we're pretty much just gonna get a unique ID and then add that point. So we'll say var ID is going to be get ID for points. It will pass in the tile itself. Um, because remember these tiles that we have here, these use cells, it's just a list of those relative tile indices. So we're gonna pass that in. And then here we are just going to say a star dot add point. Simple enough, we'll pass in the ID. And then uh, what it requires is that you give it a position um, in your grid and remember we want our a star grid to line up with our tile map grid in the sense that all the relative indices match up so we are just going to give it um, a vector of the tile. actually I think we can just do tile right because tile is a vector so that should work we're just going to give it the same x and y relative coordinates that it had in the tile map and now this is going to build up our entire a star grid which is great now what we need to do is actually implement the function that will connect all these points together. So we're going to do pretty much the same thing as we did above. We're going to go through each tile in our tile set. And again, remember, even though we're doing this twice, we're going through all these, um, we're only doing these two operations right when our game starts. So not a big performance issue. And so we're going to do, again, similar thing. We'll say var id equals get id for point. And this time we're not going to be generating a new ID to save it. We are going to be using it to grab the already existing tile that's there. So I'll say tile. And then here what we're going to do is a little bit of math to make this easier. So remember how I said we needed to connect all the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal siblings. So basically the eight tiles that surround um, our this tile that we're currently looking at. So we need to connect all of those edges, all of those lines. And in order to do that, we're gonna use a little bit of a math, a math trick to prevent us having to do the same operation over and over. So we're gonna say for x in range of three, and then for y in range of three. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna generate a set of numbers um, from zero, one, and two, in the x direction and in the y direction. So we'll get a, uh, basically a nine number or a nine tile grid where we can use these indices to just connect all these points without having to manually write that eight times. And so we'll use this double loop here and then we will say var target. And this is going to be tile. So we're going to grab the tile we're currently looking at and then add to that a vector two um, of x minus one and y minus one. And the reason we're doing that is because remember using range here, we're gonna go from zero, one, and two, but the indices we really want are relative to the current tile we're looking at. So we want the indices negative one, zero, and one in both directions. 
Okay, so now that we are getting uh, the coordinates of all like eight of our neighboring tiles, we need to actually get the ID of the current one we're looking at. So we're gonna say, uh, oops, let me do a var target, whoops, target ID. And this is gonna be, again, using our get ID for point function. And we're just gonna pass in target. And so we're gonna get the ID. And then what we need to do is check to make sure that one, and this is the thing, because we are gonna be going through the point zero, zero here, we're gonna be looking at this specific tile that we're already looking at. Um, and so what we can do is just say, if tile uh, equals target, so if our target is the tile we're currently looking at, or not a star dot has point. So we also wanna make sure that we are only connecting edges um, where there's an actual point, which might not be the case here in certain situations. So just to be safe, we'll do that. And we will just say continue. So if either of those are the case, move on to the next target tile. And then now that we have these, we know we can connect them. So we can say a star dot connect points and we're gonna give it the uh, ID of our tar or our regular tile or the current tile or center tile and then the current target tile. And this last, um, parameter here, bidirectional, remember we talked about that, we do want it to be true because we want the connection to go both ways. So now we should have not only a tile map, or a, a, sorry, a navigation map, a grid, but all the points should be connected. So now what we need to do is actually call this function when our game starts. So I'm gonna go back to our main script and I'm gonna add two on ready variables. One is gonna be for our ground because we need to pass in our ground tile map. And the other is going to be for our pathfinding. So pathfinding, and we'll do this. And then so when our game starts, um, probably line 25 that I just added here, I'm just gonna say pathfinding.create navigation map. And we're gonna pass in our ground. So we are creating a navigation map now. We are, we are turning our tile map into a grid of points that can or cannot be navigated based on parameters we give it. Now we just need to tell the rest of the game, you know, our units to use that navigation map. And so we can do that right now and actually make it so our AI units use this navigation map to get around. Now, the tricky thing about that, remember, is that our unit, our AI units are gonna live as children of our ally and enemy map AI, and those are a couple layers down, and we need to get them our pathfinding somehow. So again, we're gonna use some nested dependency injection to get those there. So what I'm gonna do is come over to our map AI, which is the script for our map AI over here, and then add to our initialize function here, um, a pathfinding parameter. And I'm also gonna come into our pathfinding script and add a class name just so that we can get good uh, auto completion for um, the what we're using here. So now I can say that our pathfinding node is of type pathfinding. And what we're gonna do then is actually pass that into um, our children. So what we can do is just save, I'll save our pathfinding here, which will be of type pathfinding and then once we've initialized this what we can do is whenever we spawn a unit down here um, we can set unit instance so these are going to be all of our units we can set unit instance dot pathfinding pathfinding <laughs> pathfinding to be pathfinding so it's a little convoluted the nested dependency injection there of just passing it down but it's a lot better than um, trying to like go up the tree and grab it from each of our units it's a little bit cleaner than that and our unit doesn't have to rely on it being there and so now if I come into our actor script um, or excuse me actually let's uh let's actually add this we're already accessing our AI from here so let's actually add this to our AI for our unit instance. And then what I can do is come into our AI script here, and then we'll have another variable here, which I'll just call pathfinding. Again, this will be a pathfinding of type pathfinding, and this is gonna be where we're actually using this pathfinding node in our unit um, to get a new path. Okay, so now we've added uh, our pathfinding node to our AI, our unit AI, but we don't, we haven't actually made a function on our pathfinding node itself that will generate a new path for that specific unit or for that 
from a certain starting position to another. So if I come back to our pathfinding script, we're gonna add that function right now. And this will probably be the last thing we do in this video. And then in the next one, we'll handle actually wiring it up. And we will handle um, actually looking at walls and starting to do some collision avoidance. So we're gonna say function and we'll just say get new path. And so we need a start location and an end location. So this will be a vector two and it will be an end or start vector two and end vector two. And these are gonna be world coordinates. So I'm just gonna add a note here. Um, start and end are both in world coordinates. So we're gonna be converting from world coordinates to our tile map or our grid coordinates, our navigation grid, because again, they're the same relative coordinates, and then back. So the first thing we need to do is um, get uh, var, we'll say var start tile, and we're gonna get the uh, tile coordinates for our start and end positions. So we need to find, for these world positions, which tile are they in? Like which, um, just like which square are they in? And this is why it's important to make sure our ground tile cover or our ground tile map covers our whole map um, so that we don't get errors here. And you could, you should definitely do some error checking here to make sure that we're actually in our tile map. Um, but we'll, we'll ignore that now and assume that we're always gonna be in our tile map because our ground tile map should cover our entire game world. So we'll say start tile, this is going to be tile map, um, again, referencing our ground tile map, and we're gonna say uh, is a, it's world to map, right? So this is a function built into a tile map where you give it world coordinates and it returns a vector two of the tile coordinates. So 32, 32 would return one, one in our tile map coordinates using our example we had earlier. So we will say um, start here, and pretty much the same thing here, end tile equals tile map, world to map, and we'll say end. So now we're gonna have our tile coordinates. Now that we have those, remember this is just our ground tile map, we need to actually get these, uh, these vertices in our navigation grid. So we're gonna say var start ID, and this is going to be, um, oh my gosh, why can't I? Oh yeah, so get point for, man, I'm blanking today. So get ID for points, and then we're going to say start tile. Same thing for our end tile. So end ID equals get ID for point and tile. Okay, so now that we have both the tile IDs for both of our tiles, what we're gonna need to do now is make sure that we can actually navigate between these two points. So we need to check that these are both valid points. So if not a star dot, whoops, a start dot has point, um, I need to indent that. So it has to have start ID. So make sure that a point with that unique ID is in it or not a star dot has point. I did it again, a start. Oh my good, good guy. All right, and this is gonna be end ID. So if either of those are not there, we just need to return and we'll return null here um, because there's no path. So, then what we can do, um, actually we might wanna just return an empty array. Let's do null for now and then if you get an error, you might have to change that to be an array depending on what happens. But okay, so if we get here, we can assume that we can navigate between these two points. So we're gonna call, we're gonna say our path map. Um, so this is our path relative to our tile map. And this is going to be a star dot get point path. And then we're going to say start. So you'll notice that get point path here takes a from and a to ID. So we'll say start ID to end ID. And this path map, what this get point path function is going to return is going to be an array of all the points, relative points, again, in our tile coordinates from start to end. And so now we need to go through this array of points and convert it to world coordinates so that we can actually tell our units to move to those world coordinates so that we're not dealing in tile coordinates anymore. So the way we're gonna do that is say um, var path world. So instead of path relative to our tile map, we'll say path world. This is gonna be just an empty array here. And then we're gonna say for point in path map. So for each tile coordinate in our path map, we're going to say point world is equal to the tile map. And similar to how our tile map has a world to map, it's also got a map to world. So we'll do tile map dot map to world. And then our map position is just going to be point. And um, we also are going to need to add 
half cell size. So remember, this map to world is going to give us the top left corner of our of our square or our, our grid, that area um, in world coordinates, but we want the middle of it so that we're not moving always to the edge of something. So we're going to add this half cell size to get the middle of that connection rather than the vertice itself, the top left corner. And so once we have this, we're going to say path world dot append. So then we're going to add this onto our array. We'll add point world. And then once we've gone through and built up all those, we can return path world. And actually I am going to make this return an array. And then this is just going to return an empty array here because there's no valid points. So what we've done here, just to recap, because again, I know lots of kind of confusing. We're going from world coordinates to tile coordinates to tile IDs, then back to tile coordinates, then back to world coordinates. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, again, if you really need to, if you need to watch this video over again or just mess around with it on your own, do whatever you got to do, because this is definitely complex. So if you're lost, it's not just you. This is tough stuff, especially if you haven't done it before. Um, but we're getting, we're converting from our world coordinates to our tile coordinates and then we're getting the specific unique IDs in our navigation grid making sure that there's a valid path between those two tiles and then we're getting the path the the tile coordinates the points between those two tiles and then we need to go through again and convert them back to world coordinates so that our units can actually use them to navigate so I think we're going to call it for this video because it's getting kind of long and we've done <laughs> plenty of stuff Next video, we'll actually implement this into our unit AI so that they use this path to move. And hopefully we'll kind of get into adding collisions and updating our uh, what our grid looks like so that points are disabled when they are blocked by walls or other units. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you've been able to follow along. Please feel free to ask any questions in the comments or hop into our Discord server. It's a great place to get some help. Um, if this has been a helpful video to you, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you would like or subscribe to the channel. That always helps just to gauge interest and helps the channel grow. Uh, but thanks so much, guys. I'll see you in the next video.